All right, gentlemen, when you get out, I want you to line single file right by this door. And when you get in, do not speak unless spoken to. All right. Watch your hands. Have a seat on the yellow. Back door, please. There's stuff in the. Oh. Y'all got a friend out there? Yeah, it's in the trunk. He's coming around. Place your foot on the. Place your feet at the top. Sir, once I take your first cuff us off, put your hands on your head. Yes, sir. Right here. Sir, I take the other cuff off of you, make sure you put your hands on your head. So you have a seat. Put your hands down. I'll be doing a, um, a photo of you. We'll be uh, strip searching you, checking for tattoos and everything, okay? Everybody understand? Yes, sir. 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 What size is your jacket, first of all? So I'll take your jacket out. Jeans are. Okay. T-shirt probably uh, small, medium. Turn around for me. Step just right here, tight like T-shoes. Converse, man. Converse. Yes, man. What size? Um, nine. And you have on socks? Yes, man. White. Black. Black. Okay. Um, officer, guy, if you're ready for me, you can go ahead and do um. Uh, Thank 
Associated with any gang? I'm sorry. You sure? Yes, sir. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from the county, sir. Okay. That's the only tattoo you have? Yes, sir. So you don't have no, you don't know no 720? Excuse me, sir. You have no 720? No, sir. Huh? No, sir. You don't know no 720? No, sir. You know that man? I'm sorry. Um, after interviewing these four kids today, none of the kids are STG related, which means gang affiliated. Well, I asked the kid that he have 720. 720 mean, do you have any knowledge? Knowledge is any knowledge about gangs or any codes, or if you know any codes or laws. He said no. He didn't even know what I was talking about, so I know he's not STG related. Scars, solo scars? Um, no, state issue shoes. Yes, sir. You're you gonna be going inside, take off your clothes, okay? I'm gonna uh, see your boxers. I'm gonna go and strip, just strip, strip search you. Just see if you got any tattoos, okay? Okay, you got stuff on. You can go back and have a seat. We have a Douglas. Stay right here, stay right here. Okay. Exactly. Anybody got any questions about what's going on? Huh? Yeah, the process is gonna take a week. Okay, y'all be in a one. Y'all have y'all be in a single cell room. Okay, which, which is cool. Okay, you'll be in a single cell room for about a week. Uh, once you get done with that process, and then you'll you'll be generating back to the regular population. Okay. And your council will let you know what unit you'll be going to and your school functions, okay? So today, well, the next thing y'all be doing, y'all be going to medical, okay? And y'all be going down to get a jumpsuit so y'all can get your attire, what y'all can wear, okay? Any other questions? Sure? Sure? Okay. If you have any questions, I need to make sure I talk to um, Ms. Griffin. Okay, she'll be our counsel for the for that two weeks while y'all here, at least on the A A two side. Okay, and she will, like I said, she'll notify you far as your your, um, your school records, uh, what what unit you'll be going to. So any questions you need you need to you need to be talking to your counselor about it. Okay, I will be your sergeant down here while you're down here. So if you need any hygiene while you're down here, you need any um, socks or any stuff like that. Let me know. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Nervous. Hello. You nervous. Okay. Let's go. Program is uh, probably one of the best programs in the state. Just do what you got to do. Okay. Yes, sir. 
everything. We got good staff here. So if you need someone to talk to, like I said, Griffin's gonna be your counselor. Shouldn't be the problem. Okay. Is there a lot of fights here, sir? A lot of fights? Oh. Nah. Nah. I'll be honest with you, there is not there is not much fights here. You'd be surprised. Nah, you ain't gotta worry about that. Like I said, if you if you have any problems, um, let me know. Okay? If you have any problems with any students, let me know. Okay? I'm an SCG coordinator, I also work with Eternal Affairs. So if you have any problems with any students, make sure you let me know. Okay? And I'll take care of it for you. Okay. Are we that dog we don't we don't allow here. Okay, so if you let me know, we'll take care of it. Any other questions? Are we allowed to have our property that we had from uh, DOC? Like no. pictures? Uh, most of your pictures is you'll be that they'll put an intake. They'll put it stored for you. Okay. So we ain't allowed to have them in our cell? No, no, you can have it in the cell. But all your personal items will be put up. All your stuff you have on now, you put up in the boxes. And you'll get them when you leave, or you can. You have an opportunity. You could send them home. What will you wear when you leave, sir? They can actually bring you new stuff, or you can keep those and you can put those on when you leave. A lot of a lot of the kids want new stuff, and your parents can pick them up. So. Sir, uh, could they like put a screw in my classes? Okay, we're going to the medical. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. They'll take care of you. Then they might switch you glasses. Yeah, if, no, they um, they're not big, but they're they're bigger than what you got on. First time being locked up. First time. Yeah. First time. Boy school. First time. Okay. Make sure you get with your counselor to make sure who's on your phone list who you can call. Okay. You'll probably talk to a counselor tomorrow. Sir, uh, do we like gotta walk inside the halls different? Behind no, our backs or something? No. When you're in school, you don't have to open the school pants behind your back. So you don't have to open your pants back? No. So you can like, keep them at your side? You keep them at your side. Okay. You'll, you'll maintain the standards as far as the haircuts and the facial hairs, okay? Like, what's the farthest you can your hair be? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, right now you're, you're, you're cool. Okay. You know. And you'll receive, you'll receive a book that all the rules, you know, as far as your conduct reports, you'll know the rules, you'll receive a, a book, and that, Miss Griffin will get that to you, your counselor. Will we go to rec today, sir? Hey, well, you won't have rec today. Sir. Okay. Uh, sir, what time do we go to bed and get up? Um, you'll go to bed approximately about 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Um, you'll get up around, probably around 5, 30, 6 o'clock to walk to, to chow. Okay. You will go to chow with the, other, with the unit. Okay. Lunch will be served around 11.30, 12-ish. Okay. Dinner served around 4.35. About a week here, you'll figure out the routine. Won't take long. Like, what's, how many phone calls can you make? Uh, she's going, a week, it depends. Um, by you being locked down for your first seven days. Okay. So you can't make any dinner? Well, she's going to give you a phone call when you first hear it. She's going to give you a five-minute phone call. Then from there, you'll get out. You get opportunity because when you get out to the regular population, you can make a phone call whenever you want to. Okay, there's all day school now going on from eight to four. So when you get back to the unit, you have opportunity to make phone calls when you want to make a phone call. If it's on your phone list, how? It, then your counselor is going to be. She's going to put the phone. She's going to make the phone list. She's going to make the phone list for you. You'll probably talk to a counselor tomorrow. It depends if you. I mean, you, you got to have. You gotta have you gotta have it in here that you want to go home, okay? A lot of people say they want to go home, but they, but they don't do the program. And a lot of them get here and be comfortable. So you know, it's a difference between being physically locked up and mentally locked up, okay? You know, a lot of kids be here so long they get mentally locked up, okay? And they get comfortable being here, and you don't want to get comfortable being here, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um like I say, if there are no guards around anywhere at the time, and if a kid is like trying to beat you up or something, like could we like have the right to fight back if they hit us and keep on hitting us? No, it's it's, it's gonna be guards around all the time. Okay, like I said, if you, remember this: if you have any problems with any students, 
let me know. Okay? Because like I said, I, I don't want, I'm the one to do the investigation. So if you have any problems with these students, you might say, hey, Sergeant Harris, such and such students trying to mess with me. Okay? Let me know. Okay? Because I can document it for you. I can, I'll look out for you. Okay? Fill out a request to talk You ain't got to fill out a request to talk to me. I'm here Monday through Friday. So if you need to, if you need to tell your officer to call me on the radio, call me. Okay? If you have a problem, call me. Yeah, you don't have to fill out any quest to talk to him. If you see me, Sergeant Harris, I need to talk to you. Yeah, yeah but like where, I, sometimes where I live and all that, um, sometimes if you like keep on snitching on the kid, they'll like get you more mad and they'll like keep it up or do something worse. Yeah, but if you don't say nothing, it makes it worse for you, right? Uh, yes, if, you, if a kid's taking my stuff and I don't say nothing, he's going to continue to take my stuff. And if they, you know, usually if, if they know you telling on somebody, usually they won't mess with you because they know you're going to tell. They won't mess with you, okay? Because if they're messing with you, I, I usually lock them up. Okay? Yes, sir. Worst thing you can do is not tell nobody what's going on, okay? That's the worst thing you can do because they're going to continue to do it. Inside of rooms, is there like a light above us that stays yes. on all the time? Yes. Because I usually stick my head on it to cover so I, there is dark so I can fall asleep faster. And, well, at our other placement, they, they tell us to not put our heads underneath the cover. Are we allowed to do it here? No, because you got to at least stick your head out. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, you can put something over your eyes if you want to. Or but they want to they keep a visual of you. Okay. Could we like just cover our face like down here? Yeah. Like um, kids here that has a whole bunch of different things, like what they're here for. Yeah, I mean this kid's here for murder. You know, you got to kill me. It, it goes. This is the maximum security. You know what I'm saying? This is the, the next. The next step here is across the street. Okay, okay. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. So the next step here is is here is across the street. That's the big boys. Okay. Time you go out the door, okay, you'll you'll count off, okay, so the officer know how many people they have, okay. So when you go out the door, you'll count one, you'll count two, you'll count three, you'll count four. Okay. You can pop, you can pop the door. Count out. Two, sir. Three, sir. Four, sir. Andrew, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> You're nervous. Arson, breaking air, and and resisting arrest, and probation violation. Tell me about what you actually did. Uh, probation violation or a crime? A crime. Uh, arson, I, I caught his apartment building on fire, and uh, I broke into a gas station, robbed 30 cars, loose pack of cigarettes, and I ran from a cop. What was the probation violation for? I was threatening, I was accused of threatening to kill three girls. You were accused of or you did? I did, sir. You did? Okay. How long have you been here? Going on 14 months, sir. 14 months. 
what have you been doing since you've been here? What kind of programs have you been involved in? Uh, Thank you for a chance, employability, uh, ART, and uh, substance abuse. What, what kind of things have you learned through those programs? <sighs> well, substance abuse, I already know a lot about, but I, I learned how to control my anger and wh which way to go with my anger and how to go about it. And uh, employability, I learned how to be a better employee. employee. And substance abuse, that just gave me more examples of what could happen if I kept using the drugs. And uh, thanks for a chance to help me go around the systems. I go about on the outs. And what kinds of drugs have you been using? Marijuana, sir. How's school? What have you been doing in school? Uh, right now I'm in GED classes and I'm there for three, three periods. And I done took a test over I think two weeks ago and I failed it. But I'm planning on going when I get home to retake it. But also I asked Mr. Nobel if I can take it before I leave. See what I can do. And I just got three credits. Okay. Um, Mr. Huff has done extremely well in school. He earned a B in Algebra 2. He has an A in PE and an A in Life Skills. He did take the pre-GED test and he struggled with um, especially the um, science and social studies parts. He got over 400 in language arts, reading and writing, and he got a 360 in math. Um, Mr. Lavelle indicates that he continues to demonstrate the behavior and attitude that made Mr. Lavelle recommend him for transition. He does a good job. He continues to work in class and is polite and respectful. He has had a major attitude change in the past four months and I recommend him for release without reservation. Where did that attitude change come from? I used that because when I was on the outs, I used to hurt a lot of people with my anger. And since I've been here, and since I know I was going to be here for a while, I thought I just put it in my head, it's time to change. And it's an opportunity to change my life for me. And I kept asking myself, do I want to go back out and do the same thing, or let this program actually help me, and actually let it come and help me. Any question? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, and um, you talked about how you had worked on your anger control. What are some skills that you learned from your ART group? Well, before, I didn't know how to talk to nobody. And I've been working on that since I've been here. And uh, my main problem is I never did talk to nobody. That's the reason I kept messing up and wasn't thinking. I just kept letting my anger build up. So. I learned how to, when, when my anger is coming, mm -hmm. I know when to talk to somebody or step away from the situation. Okay. Can you give me an example of a time maybe in the past couple weeks where you've been really angry and what you've done? Yeah, last week. Okay. Um, I had a bunch of comps that come in and uh, I went to go get my, it came Saturday and I went to go to a visit and I had plans for my family to get pictures taken. Mm -hmm. I went to go get my pictures taken and they came up missing. I just found out a couple of nights ago that one of my roommates let, uh, gave him away to get back at me for some reason. How did so, that make you feel? Well, I told him that if I didn't have no plans with my family, I wouldn't care. But since I already made, made plans, it, it made me angry. What did you do about it? I went around look, looking through people's rooms to find out where my stuff was. So you took it into your own hands? I actually, it? I went to the officer and told him to get the lieutenant. Why don't you just scoot up to the table and relax, okay? What we're doing here today is all about you, okay? 
you've already done what this program has asked you to do. You've worked really hard. Captain has just gone through your packet. He's going to ask you a few questions about what's in there. But the treatment team has said that you've accomplished the goals and the objectives that were set for you based upon your risks and your needs. Okay? And that's something to be celebrated. And you said that you have some anger issues, you know, that, that boil up inside of you. And that's what happened. That's what happened in the community. Uh, that's why you set a fire. That's why you threatened those girls. Uh, and I think the question Ms. Mm -hmm. Blessinger asks you is very, very important to this committee, how you answer that question. You need to convince us that you've got a handle on that and that you understand what it is that boils up inside of you and causes you to want to be so angry that you might hurt somebody. Okay? So look at us and think about it. And remember that we have confidence that you've got the answer. I let anger build up inside me so so much before I let it out. Got distress. Plus, lately I've been trying to go home, and I've been getting frustrated ever since. And uh, I I just keep looking at my think about my family. When my mom wants me home, my niece's nephew needs me. And I already got a brother that's locked up. I try to help him, and now I got little sisters aiming for it and, and so I, I can't I can't let them see that I'm the same person I gotta change so your family is a motivator yes ma'am so, so what's, what's different now than it was from before what's different with you personally that's gonna make a that's gonna keep you focused to keep you from getting angry when once you're out of this environment as I learned as I've been here I learned how to talk to people so once my anger comes up, the only thing I got to do is go to time out or walk away for a minute and go talk to the person or go talk to somebody else, see if they can give me some good advice. Hey, Chris. Oh. You're actually going to live with your mother, is that right? Is this the first time that you've been living with her or have you been with her in the past? I've been with her in the past, my Okay. Have you had much contact with her since you've been here? I just had a visit two weeks ago, and I just called her yesterday. Okay. Because we had our first family session. Okay. So how did that first family session go? It's okay. Uh, Miss Price said we're going to be doing another one after she comes back. Before you, before you actually would go? Okay. All right. That's good. I'm going to review some things that are in your aftercare plan. Your counselor went over this with you and you've signed it, but I want to review it so the team will know what's in it. Um, you've indicated in here that um, there's probably a low, low probability that you're going to get involved in substance abuse issues using drugs again, but because you'll be on parole, they're going to have you do the random urine screens, so you need to be aware of that. They'll be checking on you, and that's really just a safety valve to help you stay clean. <laughs> Also, the goal that you have of getting your GED is listed in here uh, so that you can keep working toward that. But what, what I thought was really interesting is you actually have a long-term goal on here. And that long-term goal is to become a, a semi-truck driver uh, or maybe a diesel mechanic. So that will be something you can work toward to get your GED and get involved in vocational education. Um, and that will be a wonderful thing. Uh, it also indicates on here that you will continue family counseling sessions. And it doesn't have a location listed in here. Do you know where you're going to do that? Glencoe. Okay. Very good. I'm also going to go back to anger management counseling, too, as I get out to get extra help. That's good. That's a good decision. Andrew, um, are you going to be going to Southeast IU Career Center? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you'll be enrolled in a GED program yes, there. Okay, uh, we also need to talk about your age. You are 18 years old. You will need to register yourself for the draft. We've talked about that at many, mm -hmm. many case conferences. You do that by going to the yeah. post office. You might make that a part of your way home. 
okay? Just stop by the post office, fill out the card. Do you remember what we discussed about that? Not exactly. Okay, you have to re every 18 year old in the United States of America has to register their name when they turn 18. Um, in the event that we wouldn't have enough enlisted men to go to war, if we would ever go to war, they would start to pull names from a pool of all those cards. So you, by law, everyone here, all the, I, I know that uh, Captain's done it, I'm pretty sure Mr. Dempsey's done it, you register your name. Just stop at the post office and pick up the card, okay? It's real easy. Um, I want to, I want to, what kinds of things have you done to, to make up for some of the, the harm that you've caused through your, your offenses and the people that you've hurt? I really haven't done anything. I got locked up, so I really couldn't have a chance to. The only, only thing I'm going to do is just let this program help me change the way I used to do to them. Who have you hurt through all this? My mother, my little sister, and my nieces and nephews. That's it? Yes, sir. Who, who uh, was it an apartment that you built now, burnt down? The arsonist, yeah. What? What about all the people that were impacted by that? It was a bad apartment. It was a band building. What about the place that you uh, burglarized? Uh, Wasn't it a business? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who was affected by that? How do you think it, it made him feel for you to go in and, and burglarize his place of business? Probably upset him and probably made him mad. Mm -hmm. So you haven't given much thought to people that you, you victimized at all, have you? Not exactly. Did you talk about that in any of your groups? Uh, when Miss Bean was here, I talked to her. And uh, the guy that owned the apartment building, he was actually going to work with me. He so thought I wouldn't have to do community service. He's going to, or make me pay. He's going to let me help him restore the building. So when did you have contact with that issue? Was it before you came to the facility or after it's you got right here? Before the, uh, right before that. Okay. So there has been some co contact on uh, paying back to the victim the hurt that you caused. The, the, the guy that owned the marathon store, since he got all his product back, mm -hmm. he, he said I didn't have to do anything. Well, that's good. And what about the, the three people that you threatened to hurt or kill, was it? Uh, Who were they? One was my ex, one was my brother's ex, and one was my cousin's ex. Do you think they were impacted by that at all? I don't know. I know. I know one of them was. How were they impacted? Upset, scared, worried. How do you feel about that? I don't know. Feel bad for what I've done, but I, I know I can't change it. So, but I, I, I think I can try to help them, apologize to them, try to make things right with them, get them not to be scared of me anymore. Yeah, it's up to you to make a difference. Um, you need to recognize the fact that you have, you've victimized people and that 
the things that you've done that hurt people, right? And you need to make some uh, reparations for that, okay? Yes, sir. Right. Anybody got anything else? No. Yeah, I do have one question. What changed in November? Up until November, you got two, three, four conduct reports a month, every month, just like clockwork. What changed? The fact that uh, I was, I'm tired of being here. And it, I grew up and I said it's time to go. And I realized that keep getting these conduct reports ain't gonna help me go home. And if I keep getting them, I'm just gonna stay here longer, hurt my family, hurt myself, hurt the people that wants me home. So, my thinking, the way I did things, I can say that's what changed. I did a lot more thinking after I did all that, and I finally came up with a solution. We well, probably came up with the right solution. Now your problem is going to be you have to think before you act. Yes, sir. Okay. Andrew, right now, right here, this very moment, I'm very proud of you. Do you know why? Because you've been honest with us, because you've spoken from the heart, and because there's no doubt in my mind that you mean what you're saying right now. The real key for your future and those people that you really care about is whether or not you can keep that honesty and sincerity right out in front of you as you walk out this door because that's what will lead you in the right direction honesty and sincerity and caring about other people and i think you do i want to be just want to be a better person mm -hmm. it's important you got if nothing else you got to do it for yourself okay before i got here when I was locked up before, I made a plan before I got released that I was going to try to help others. And I got locked up and realized I didn't do much of anything. It just made things worse. Okay. And that's what I want to continue to do when I get home. Okay, do you have questions for us? Can't think of anything. Time will ask for a vote of the committee on the recommendation of the promotion of Andrew to the release phase. Ms. Blessinger? I agree. I support also. I do too. I agree. I support. Congratulations, you're promoted to the release phase. And don't forget <laughs> everything you learned, all right? I'm now. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Good job. Here we go. Hey. Good job. Oh. Well, that's where she usually signs. So tell me, how do you feel? There's that. Excited. I just want to do it, have fun, go, have fun. A little shocked. I knew most of it could have got me denied, but they accepted me, so I'm impressed. Were you scared halfway through? Yeah. I didn't know it was. Was it harder than you thought it was going to be? Yes, ma'am. Tell me, tell me why you thought it was hard. Because I was, when you got it first, I mean, I was stuttering a lot. And I paused a lot before I thought. And I, that's what I thought. And if, they, if they see me pausing a lot, they pause and then come pause before I do another thing and they'll come back. All right. 